Good afternoon, dear friends, and welcome to this Holy Mass of Wednesday, the 23rd week in Ordinary Time. Today is also the memorial of St. Peter Clara. We pray in this Mass for all those who have asked our prayers. Today I will pray especially for a young couple that is expecting their first child, their daughter, in a few weeks. Pray and ask that God may be with them, that God may protect them, and that God may safely deliver them of their baby. Also pray for parents, especially parents who are struggling with children, who have physical or mental disabilities, that God may provide them grace to lovingly procure and nurture their children. Pray for all those who are grieving at this time. Pray for those who are poor, homeless, and in need. Pray for victims of human oppression around the world. Pray for a more compassionate, a more compassionate government in our church, in our local communities, in our nations, and among families. I would also like you to bring your intentions and let us pray together. I pray for those who have birthdays and anniversaries. And so I invite you to let us go to the altar of God with the song Companions on the Journey. We are companions on the journey, breaking bread and sharing life. And the love we bear is a hope we share. For we believe in the love of our God. We believe in the love of our God. No longer strangers to each other. No longer strangers in God's house. We are fed and we are nourished by the strength of those who care, by the strength of those who care. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. To prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and our sickness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and Amen. Lamb of God, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, in regard to virgins, I have no commandment from the Lord, but I give my opinion as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. So this is what I think best because of the present distress, that it is good, it's a good thing for a person to remain as he is. If you are bound to a wife, do not seek separation. Are you free of a wife? Then do not look for a wife. If you marry, however, you do not sin. 
nor does an unmarried woman sin if she marries. But such people will experience affliction in their earthly life. And I would like to spare you that. Tell you, brothers, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them. Those weeping as not weeping. Those rejoicing as not rejoicing. Those buying as not owning. Those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I respond to the psalmist, listen to me, daughter, see and bend your ear. Hear, O daughter, and see, turn your ear, forget your people and your father's house. So shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your Lord, and you must worship him. Listen to me, daughter, see and bend your ear. All glorious is the king's daughter as she enters. Her remnants is threaded with spawn gold. In embroidered apparel, she is born into the king. Behind her, the virgins of her train are brought to you. Listen to me, daughter, see and bend your ear. They are born in their gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king. The place of your fathers, your sons, shall have. You shall make them princes through all the land. Listen to me, daughter. See and bend your ear. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Rejoice and live for joy. Your reward will be great in heaven. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Raising his eyes towards his disciples, Jesus said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are weeping now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you, and denounce you as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and live for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you will receive, you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, it's always a blessing and a joy whenever we have the opportunity like this to celebrate this sacrament of God's love and to listen and be um, edified and just be nourished by the power of God's word and sacrament. So I hope that this moment that we share together, gathered together under God, will bring you some comfort, bring you some assurance, bring you some peace, inspire some hope, and maybe just give you one more reason to keep pressing forward. Today I will be reflecting with you from the Gospel reading. I don't know about you. I don't like to be poor because I don't know how many people enjoy being poor. The reason you don't want to 
You don't want to be poor. It's because when you are poor, and I mean material poverty in this case, you have needs that you can't afford. You have things you can't do. In most cases, you are reliant or dependent on someone else. And I don't know how many people enjoy that. So majority, I'm sure majority, if not um, a big number of people, don't enjoy being poor. And sometimes that's why we work so hard. We want some, some, some level of control. And what money does, even if it doesn't bring everything, is that we feel a certain level of control that I can access and pay for the things, the services I need. Maybe my insurance, my family's insurance, pay for a car, own a house where I can stay and not be homeless, be able to nourish my body with good food and my families. So, and maybe retire and have a life until the day we go home. So we, we, we definitely, we normally need that. Not because we're materialistic. But sure, being able to care for oneself, it's a need. So not many people will you know, um, freely embrace and be comfortable in poverty. Similarly, you know, not many people want to be hungry. If you've ever been hungry, you know what that is. Your leg, everything about you begins to shiver and shake, or sometimes uncontrollably. You become irritable, angry, upset at everything. You, your ability to even listen and comprehend is impacted by that. You become very easily upset, offended, and your trigger points are this, this much when you are hungry because your, your body metabolism so that suddenly changes. The enzymes are trying to find something to keep them going. And, and even physiologically, it impacts on your the, the, the walls of your intestines. So hunger is also not something that we enjoy. You know that the last time you were hungry, that it wasn't fun. Sometimes you begin to see one thing in two places when you're hungry, really hungry. You hear voices that don't exist. And nobody also enjoys weeping. You know how we feel as we feel ashamed sometimes to even weep in front of our children or people that we care about. So these are not things we enjoy. We don't want to lose people or lose things that will make us weep. We want to amass more and keep what we have. That's why grieving is such a difficult process. And finally, nobody wants to be hated. We want to be loved. Believe it or not. Um, being, be, belonging, being part of something, a family or anything, it's a, it's a human, it's a basic human need. The desire to be loved and to belong, it's a basic human need. So people generally don't want to be hated. They don't like it. Yeah, they could, they could cope with it, but generally you would want to be accepted, appreciated, loved, understood, entertained, accommodated. And, and so, so this, these are all basic needs. And the Lord says that if we really want happiness, we must learn to live without all of this. And that's hard. So it's important for us to place all of this in context and understand exactly what the Lord is saying. The Lord is not saying here that um, if you had a good job, give it up. If you had a bank account, go give it up. If you had some investments, just forget about them. So this is not about having wealth. After all, Abraham, it's believed, was the richest man on earth and he was the most loved by the Almighty God. So God is not against you being wealthy, you working hard and being rich, you working hard and having the material comfort that you need. The poverty that the Lord is talking about here is not making yourself beholden to the things that you have or making your, your happiness dependent on the things that you have. That is, um, that is the reason for a lot of um, frustration, a lot of depression, a lot of unhappiness, a lot of regrets. I've seen people who 
believe that, well, if I landed, if I just have this job, I'll be so happy. If I have this, I'll be so happy. And God is saying to us, no, no, no. Your happiness does not depend on what you have. Your happiness depends on who you are. And so we make that mistake. And he doesn't want us to make mistakes. Yeah, a good job will, will give you some pleasure, some momentary pleasure, maybe for a day, for two weeks, for a month. But it doesn't give you happiness. And so the Lord is saying, yeah, quit seeking after things that give you momentary burst of, of pleasure or excitement. And suddenly everything fits. And you're like, what happened? Because happiness doesn't come from just having wealth. It comes from knowing the place of wealth in your life. If your wealth becomes your master or your mistress, your, your boss, the thing that you depend, the foundation on which you, you, you're standing, then that's a problem. You're setting yourself up for a lot of misery and unhappiness down the line. The same thing could be said of hunger. The, the Lord is not talking about physical hunger. Yeah, physical hunger. Um, that's not what he's talking about. But the Lord is saying, remember what he said somewhere else, to make this make sense, uh, I'd like to place something else that he had said. He said, man does not live on bread alone. Man does not live on bread alone. The mistake we do very often in the words of St. Paul is that for some of us, our stomachs have become our gods. So all we care about is wanting to eat the best food and the best everything, hoping that that will make us happy. Yeah, that would, the taste and everything could, could pleasure your palate and make you feel like, wow, I feel so good. And, you know, how you feel, some moments, you know, of excitement and pleasure. But just a full stomach will not make you a happy person. Unless you, did, you learn to feed on that which makes you happy, which is the word of God. And the sacrament, the Eucharist of Jesus Christ. So when the Lord says, man does not live on bread alone. Yeah, bread is, bread is valuable, it's important. But the real thing that can fill you and give you the enduring sense of joy and happiness, it's when you feed on the word of God, like Jeremiah. And when you feed on the Eucharist of Jesus Christ, like what he said to the apostles. So, so God wants you to be hungry for him. In the words of St. Saint, Saint Augustine, it says, God, you have made us for yourself. We will never be filled. Our hearts are forever restless until we are fed and nourished by you. Until you fill our whole self. Because we were made for everlasting life. That means nothing temporal can satisfy. The Lord says, Blessed are you who are weeping now, for you will laugh. Yet, yeah, so, this is all, doesn't have to be taken literally. But there are too many people who believe that they're happy today only because they have all of the material things on earth. The Lord is saying this to you. That unless we learn to, the, the weeping here is, this, 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 the, sometimes the sadness that we feel when we lose or we give away things that we have, sacrifice, giving away anything, means you lose something. And for some of us, that's why giving is so hard. We can't, we, can't, we can't endure the pain of being generous. We can't endure the pain of losing something that we have to make others better. And until you are able to learn that sense of detachment where the things you have only serve um, what you might call an instrumental value, meaning they are to be used to do good, and that you can let go of some of the things you have to make others better. That may make you feel a sense of loss and grief. That, wow, okay, if I give away $1,000 or $500 or $100, that's something that I've lost. It's not coming back. At least not in that sense. So it is that sense of grief that stops most people from ever giving. The fear to feel that I just lost $100. Wow. You didn't lose it. You invested it. And, and finally, we all want to be loved. Yes. But the Lord is also saying this. Don't depend so much on the opinion of people and how everyone is praising you. People may praise you because they don't know who you are. Fully. Completely. 
that praising you for what they see. God says, focus on what he sees because he sees everything. Yeah, people may give you praises and sing on you and say all the good things about you only because all they see are your actions. Yeah. God sees your action, your motivation and my motivation. And God is saying, if we pay too much attention on just the physical that is visible to people and forget about the motivation that is internal to us and to God, we might get the praises and acclaim of people, but we lose the reward of eternal life. And so it doesn't matter what you're doing today. Purify your motives, purify your intentions, and let that guide everything that you do. When you do, when you do all of this, these are the things that will make you and bring you and bring me real and true happiness or blessedness. So we pray, dear friends, that we may learn from God every day to seek true blessedness and true happiness. It does not depend on all these material things. It depends on us understanding the principles that the Lord Jesus lays out for us today. And I pray and hope, dear friends, that as our ears listen, the psalmist said, listen to me, daughter, see and bend your ear. I hope you will listen and bend your ear and take to heart these principles that God has laid out for your joy, for your happiness, for your blessedness, and indeed for your contentment. As so as I like to end all of my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of God Almighty. God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. In the table of God's war and in this Eucharist, the Father nourishes his people with his beloved Son. Let us pray to our loving Father for all the needs of the world. For the priest of our church, that they may continue to offer the gifts to God's people, the gifts of the gifts of the people faithfully, like the priest of old Melchizedek, that in word and sacrament they may nourish God's church always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who share and participate in this Eucharistic table, especially those participating spiritually, that they may appreciate more deeply the real presence of Jesus in his word and in his sacrament. And so be nourished and be blessed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those oppressed by starvation and hunger in soul and in body, that the Eucharistic Church may help to meet their bodily and spiritual needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the community gathered by God at this Mass, especially those who are not here physically, that in their lives, they may always hunger for Christ, the living bread from heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who labor and are burdened, that the gentle heart of the Savior may bring rest to their souls. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have asked our prayers, especially for the young family, that is expecting their baby daughter in a few weeks. That God may be with them, that God may bless that child in her arrival. Pray also for those who have birthdays or anniversaries. They may feel the blessing and love of God. We pray for all those who have sent intentions for their sick ones, for any other condition or experience in their lives, that they may feel the mercy, the love, and intervention of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that through this Eucharistic sacrifice, they may come to eternal life with Christ, and that they may feel the peace of his presence. And for their loved ones who grieve their passing, that God may bring them comfort and respite. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our Blessed Mother to pray with us as we say, Hail, Holy Queen, 
mother of mercy, her life, her sweetness, and her hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of our womb, Jesus. O clement, so loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Most generous Father, you provide for all our needs with the sublime gift of your Son in the sacrament of the Eucharist and his word and sacrament. Receive our prayers through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become a bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. For to the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual food. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may faithfully be united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lead them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. In the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring all to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. 
Father, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may be married to be co heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. And from me, from my heart to yours, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. To grace for spiritual communion. Most merciful God, today you remind us that unless we are willing and able to let go of what we hold in our hearts and in our hands, there will be no space for you to fill us with the blessings of your love. We ask, dear God, that you may give us the grace to detach and to free ourselves from all the entanglements of temporary existence. And we may place our hearts, our soul, and our everything under your feet, and so be nourished by this sacrament of life. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacraments, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sins of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the winds of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you who were able to join at this time, or may join later, that God, who knows your needs, anticipates your desires, that he may hold it totally and completely 
bless you in every good way. So always remember, you remain the delight of God Almighty. God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of St. Peter Clever and our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gonna sing how great thou art. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider the walls thy hands have made, I see the storms, I hear the rolling thunder, thy path through all. The universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. 